The world is hurting and desperately in need of a savior. Let's take the word of faith and hope to every nation and transform the world. This is the vision and mission of Team International. For more information, contact us at www.teamministriesinternational.com. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. God's kingdom philosophy defined the message of Jesus and brought him tremendous success. Failure to follow this example would lead to frustration and negativity. You know, the truth is, uh, people are complaining, saying that, why are these things happening? The truth is, if you keep doing the wrong things, you ain't going to get the right result. I have no doubt that Christians are the most powerful people in the world. I have no doubt that Christians are the most prosperous people in the world. I have no doubt that Christians are the most successful people in the world. I have no doubt that there is nothing that we can't do. But the question is, if you say that, why are many Christians sick? Why are many Christians poor? Why are many Christians inconsequential? The answer is simple. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Your knowledge about God's kingdom is going to empower you to do unlimited exploits. The Bible tells me that those who know that God shall be strong and they shall do great exploits. It is my desire that you will run with one message, not the message of yourself, not the message of your own philosophy or your own opinion, it is the kingdom message. The kingdom message is a message of faith. The kingdom message is a message of righteousness. The kingdom message is a message of holiness. The kingdom message is a message of integrity. The kingdom message is a message of grace. The kingdom message is a message of power. The kingdom message is the last hope for the whole world. Because if you want to see changes in the nations of the world, it is not your constitutional provisions and constitutional legislation that's going to change the nations. It can help a bit. But the whole world is waiting for the message of truth. The whole world is waiting for the message of liberation. There is no message stronger than the message of faith. If you take the message of faith to Europe, if you take the message of faith to Africa, if you take the message of faith to America, if you take the message of faith to all parts of the world, you are going to see tremendous miracles. You're going to see tremendous signs and wonders. Is there someone in this place who is so angry in his spirit, angry with the failure we see around, angry with the mess we see around, and who wants to turn around? If you are that man and, and if you're that woman, join this revolutionary train because I'm taking you on a cruise to the destination of faith. I am tired of being where I am. I am tired of where the church is. I want to see a strong church in the Republic of the Philippines like what we have back home in Nigeria. I want to see the dead come back to life. I want to see people raising the dead. I want to see miracles. I want to see people who can tell COVID you come against me with your feet and javelin but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts whose army you've defied. Someone should be tired of living in sin and inconsequential lifestyle someone should be tired of being a slave of unrighteousness let's go wide, let's go big let's depopulate hell and let's make heaven proud let's go from city to city from nation to nation telling them that Jesus is the key Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer is there someone here downcast I came with the good news the gospel of the kingdom can destroy depression the gospel of the kingdom can take 
take you from where you are to the place you ought to be. Is there someone thinking of big things? It may be impossible in your barangay. It may be impossible in your province. It may be impossible with your present state. But I came to tell you that with my God, all things are possible. That house is possible. That business is possible. That marriage is possible. That home is possible. You are recovering from sickness. You will not die before your time. Tell your friends, say, it is possible. The bankers may say it is not possible, but with my God, it is possible. The doctors may say all hope is gone, but with my God, it is possible. The government will say we are shutting down, but with my God, it is possible. With Christ, all things are possible. Why do we come to church? To play games? You should know me by now. If the gospel doesn't work, I'll be the first one to tell you that this is a fraud. There is something fundamentally right about the gospel. There is something fundamentally right about the promises of God. It is not God's fault if bad things are happening to you. It is because you have not believed enough. It is because you've not prayed enough. It is because you have not persevered enough. But Bishop, I've been praying all my life. Shut up. The Bible didn't tell me to stop for a moment. The Bible tells me, pray without ceasing. If you know your adversary doesn't rest, why do you want to rest? Why do you want to cease from prayer? You must get to a realm of prayer that prayer is no longer a burden, but it becomes your lifestyle. Because you can say, you know God, and you don't know how to speak in his language. The Bible tells me that he that speaks in tongues, speaks in an unknown language to men is foolish. But how be it in the spirit realm, he speaks mystery. Mystery unto God. There are some problems that you can't solve. And you look at the whole thing and, and things are going so, hey, why are everything just going upside down? But there is a language of the kingdom. It's called speaking in tongues. Because when you speak it, you are saying, I can't pray it on my own. I'm bringing the Holy Spirit to help me to pray. Because if you don't pray without ceasing, you ain't going to see ceaseless miracles in your life. Psalm 82 verse 5 tells me, They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. You know why the, the entire world is in crisis? Because they don't know. How many times have we told them that we don't have many ways? There is only one way, and that way is Jesus. And there is only one route, and that route is a kingdom path. There is only one name, and that name is the name of Jesus that is above every other name. But you're looking for many ways. That's why many people are confused. There is one way. There is one path. There is one truth. There is one gospel. And it is called the gospel of the kingdom. Psalm 11 verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? God is not saying there is nothing you can't do. So with all the darkness around you, what are you going to do about the darkness around you? What are you going to do about the poverty around you? What are you going to do about the sickness around you? What are you going to do about the failure around you? The absence of light is the presence of darkness. No wonder the prophet said something. He said, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Unto righteousness flows like an ever-flowing stream. John chapter 8, 31 to 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What you know can preserve your destiny, but what you don't know can destroy you. Ignorance is not an excuse in the spirit realm. Because if you don't know, you're going down. If you don't know, situations going to swallow you up. 
You must have a life that is driven by the knowledge of who you are and what you are in Christ. Some of you, you want us to have a pity party with you. Every time tragedy strikes you, you go to the social media, you begin to talk about the nonsense. I don't magnify crisis. I don't magnify weakness. I glorify God. Because the Bible tells me that when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Your attitude towards crisis needs to change. We ain't hopeless. We have hope. The Bible is the living proof of that hope. 2,000 years ago, historians tried to remove the Bible from history, but we are still standing because you can't abolish the truth of God's word. How can you kill something that is a spirit? Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. That means anytime you invoke the Bible, you are invoking the spirit of God. And the Bible tells me that where the spirit of the sovereign Lord is, there is freedom. I declare that everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice, freedom is coming to your health. Freedom is coming to your marriage. Freedom is coming to your business. Freedom is coming to your home. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. You can't rule effectively as a king without understanding dominion. The Greek nouns, Malkut and Mamlaka are connected and it means kingdom. The word used in Genesis 1, 28 is similarly expressed in Numbers 24, 4 to 7, where Balaam prophesied about a great kingdom for Israel. And in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 31, when Saul tried to convince Jonathan to protect his inheritance kingdom from David. 2 Chronicles Chapter 1, verse 1. Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord, his God, was with him and exalted him exceedingly. The truth is some of you cannot reign effectively as kings on this planet if you don't know the meaning of dominion. Dominion simply means take over. How do you do this? The Bible tells me, wherever the soles of your feet shall tread upon, that you shall take for a possession. Today, by the mystery of the anointing of the kingdom, I declare that as you step out of this place and step into territories, you will step into your victory. You will step into your inheritance. You will step into your promotion. You will step into power. You will step into relevance in the mighty name of Jesus. Every altar standing against you and your destiny. Today by the prophetic word of God I dethrone every demonic altar against your destiny and I speak by the mystery of the spirit of God and the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. O altars of unrighteousness. O altars of sickness. O altars of death. O altars of destruction. Risen against the people of God by the altar of righteousness. By the blood of Jesus I command you this destroyed in the name of Jesus. In the place of depression, I plant the altars of praise. In the place of failure, I plant the altars of success. In the place of prayerlessness, I plant the altar of prayer. In the place of hopelessness, I plant the altar of hope. Someone is stepping into 2022 with power, with glory, with honor, with dignity. Two touch, two three people tell them I am coming out of depression. I am coming out of failure. I am coming out of every cage. I am free. What are the essential truths of God's kingdom philosophy? One, a man that is governed by natural philosophy rather than divine principles will never inherit the kingdom of God. Two, People who are led by natural laws to the detriment of kingdom laws will be dominated, controlled, and subdued by natural circumstances. Three, people who embrace natural or demonic philosophical reasoning will never experience the benefits of God's kingdom promises. They will be enslaved by demonic powers. Then four, you cannot dominate as kings and priests on earth without practicing God's 
kingdom principles. Recognize your life's vision and purpose. Some of you are confused about everything. Some people are confused about their identities. Some are confused about what God has called them to do. I want you to know that there are no waste products in God's kingdom. Everything that God has placed in your life was done so deliberately for you to manifest your purpose. Even your skin color is for a reason. Your hairstyle is for a reason. The, the structure of your nose is for a reason because God is a wise master planner. Confusion and suffering are inevitable for those who don't recognize who and what they are. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 tells me my people perish for lack of knowledge. David knew who he was. Jeremiah knew who he was. John the Baptist knew who he was. And Jesus Christ knew who he was. David said, Lo, I came to do that which was written concerning me in the volume of books. If you check the archives of God, every one of you, books have been opened for you. Sometimes through prophetic instincts and prophetic giftings, we see from time to time. What do you think we do when we lay hands on you and we begin to prophesy? You think we manufacture those prophecies? If you manufacture them, they won't come to pass. For God to show us his mercy so that we don't get discouraged. Because people get discouraged when they don't know what's ahead of them. So God takes the prophet. He takes him to the realm of the spirit. Higher realm. And he opens the book. Then you begin to see. Then you come back to the earth realm. The prophet laughs. He tells you, Kuya Henry, I saw this. I saw this. I saw this. Then maybe Kuya Henry was a bit discouraged. But suddenly wakes up. There is joy in his spirit because he knows that tomorrow is going to be great because Jesus leaves. As I step into the volume of books, what have I seen? I see life. I see promotion. I see elevation. I see victory. I see success. I see supernatural breakthroughs. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. When they met David, David said, I came to do that which was written concerning me in the volume of books. Now, some of you are frustrated because God has given you a DNA path to follow, but you've made up your own plans. God is not going to back up your own plans. That's why the Bible tells me, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You can't expect God to direct your path when you're the driver of your own destiny. Discover what God has written concerning you and your family and you are going to be safe. If you understand God's plan and purpose for your business, for your home, for your marriage, you're going to be safe. Don't go and come out with a manufactured script. If you are writing your own destiny plan by your emotions, it will fail. If you're writing it by manipulation, it's going to fail. If you're writing it by philosophical reasoning, it's going to fail. Allow God to speak because God cannot lie. The Bible tells me by two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. And God will never give his children bad things. God will never give his children premature death. God will never give his children defeat. Jesus said, if your earthly parents know how to give good gifts, by nature, your earthly parents are evil. They know how to protect their own. How much more me? God will protect every one of you in the name of Jesus. Banish fear from your life. Banish sorrow from your life. Banish demonic thoughts from your life. Cast down every imagination that does not glorify God. And say like Job, I know that my Redeemer lives. The Bible tells me no good things will he withhold from those who believe him. Jeremiah said, while I was in my mother's womb, you knew me. Isaiah said the same thing. What are your convictions? They met John the Baptist. They were trying to confuse him with someone's DNA plan. 
Are you Jeremiah? Are you Isaiah? Are you John the Baptist? Who are you? The problem with some of you, you allow people to define you. You allow situations to define you. You allow sickness to define you. There are people in the Bible up to now we never knew their names because those people allowed their situations to define them. The woman with the issue of blood. Thank God that's not my name. Blind Bartimaeus or whatever his name is, at least they added a bit of his name to his infirmity. But some people, they were just known by their sickness. I pray that none of you will be defined by your weaknesses. None of you will be defined by your problems. You will be defined by the purpose of God in the mighty name of Jesus. John the Baptist says something. I am none of these ones. I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, declaring to you, preparing the way. Every one of you, God has given you a DNA plan. And I declare that none of you will die before your time. Every one of you will finish A to Z what God has written concerning you. What have you seen, man of God? I see some of you turning the Philippines upside down in the world of politics. I see some of you turning the Philippines upside down in the world of business. I see some of you turning the Philippines upside down in the realm of science and technology. I see some of you turning the Philippines upside down in ministry. I declare that your time has come. Shine into your destiny. Shine into your life. Shine into what God has called you to do. That we know stop you because the Bible tells me that if God be for us who can be against us none of you will die before your time because in the kingdom we don't die we leave the stage when we are finished you can only leave this planet when you are true God is an investor your life is his investment it was an investment made by the blood of Jesus. And you are not permitted to die before your assignment is finished. Every gate of death opened against you. Today by the keys that Jesus gave to the church of which I am a representative. I take the keys of the kingdom and I shut the gates of death against you. I open the windows of life. Receive life in the name of Jesus. I shut the gates of bankruptcy against you and I release the windows of heaven and I declare abundance is coming. I shut the gates of sickness against you and I release health upon you. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes when we speak faith messages like this, they say, ain't you a bit boastful? The Bible tells me if anyone boasts, let him boast in God. Because faith, it's been boastful and been hopeful because of what God has promised. It is not my promise. It is the promise of our Father. And it's my duty to tell you that every one of you, you're a candidate of those promises. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. They met Jesus and they told him, are you a king? Jesus said, you say rightly I'm a king. For this reason, for this purpose, I was born. Every one of you, you were born for a reason. So don't allow distraction to take you from that purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't destroy your destiny by confessing the wrong things. Declare what God says you are. Kings and priests as manifested in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 to 6. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs, Chapter 6, verse 2. You are ensnared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. The reason some of you are experiencing disaster is because you always think of negative things or you say negative things. And the truth is, words are not cheap. You will be made to give an account of everything you've spoken in this world. Now, someone is going to be wondering, why does God love man so much? Let's check Psalm 8, verse 4 to 6. What is man that you are mindful of him? 
what is this man that you even sent your only begotten son into this world to die for him? What is this man? What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Now, I want you to look at the word. You have made him a little bit lower than the angels. The original translation of that means you have made him a little bit lower than Elohim. Elohim means God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So God is saying, I made you a bit lower than me. That is who you are. God did not give all his attributes to angels. He said, to which of the angels did he say, my son? God did not give angels are not joint heirs with God. We are. Angels were not given an inheritance. We were given. So when you live lower than the way God wants you to live, you make a mockery of the kingdom agenda. You are not permitted to live as a beggar. You are not permitted to live sick. You are not permitted to be broke. You are not permitted to be at the bottom. The Bible tells me you shall be the head and not the tail. Today, by the mystery of the word of God, everyone under assault from hell, everyone that has been dragged down to the place of indignity, I declare that the finger of God is lifting you up. Just as the spirit of God lifted up Ezekiel, the spirit of God will lift you up from depression, lift you up from defeat, lift you up from depression, lift you up from everything, and lift you to the place that God wants you to be. The Bible tells me we reign with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, far above sickness, far above defeat, far above everything that is shameful. I declare that your time to rise has come. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now, the truth is, were you made by God? Oh, come on. Someone is still confused. Were you made by God? In what's image? Does God lie? Should you lie? Is God sick? Should you be sick? Is God broke? Should you be broke? Is God powerless? Should you be powerless? Is God defeated? Has he ever lost a battle? Should you live in defeat? Is God a king? Are you not a king? Manifest yourself and begin to live as a king because Jesus is a king of kings and lord of lords because we are members and heirs of God's kingdom. I do not define myself with my race. I do not define myself by the degrees and educational qualities I possess. I define myself in the truth of God's creation. I am like God. I represent him. If Jesus commanded the rains not to fall, be sure that if I go to a typhoon infested place, I'll say, I have come in the name of God. Typhoon, you cannot. We must know who we are. The devil knows who he is. And he wants you not to know who you are. You were made in the image of God to have dominion. Dominion means being in charge. When the situation is in charge, it means the demons are trying to dethrone you. You have to be in charge. By God's grace and by the mercies and power of God, every one of you from this moment begin to manifest the dominion mandate in every spectrum of life. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. 
Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. Let me make something clear. For a long time, men, we have tried to deceive women by saying, I'm the man. The Bible tells me that he made man in his own image, male and female. He created them. I want to make it known to the world. It is wrong for one gender to say, I am the man and you're the woman. The right thing is, I am the male and you are the female. The man is the man and the woman is also the man. We must begin to define ourselves the way God sees us. It is demonic for the man to take the title of a man and tell the woman you are a woman when the Bible tells me that the woman is a man and the man is a man. So we should be calling ourselves male and female. Everyone in team is a man made in the image of God. But the gender we have in team is male and female. Because if you don't know who you are, that's why some feminist group come and say, the Bible didn't say so much about women. Who said so? You're probably suffering from the spirit of ignoramus. Who said so? The Bible makes no discrimination between a man and a woman. There are no race in the Bible. No Africans or Filipinos. No men, no women. In Christ, we are all one. That means what Bishop Tony can do, what the bishops of Tim can do, what the pastors of Tim can do, every one of you can do the same thing. Let me hear that amen. amen. Another thing I want to make clear to you is this. There are three realms that control our planet. The air, water, in the earth. And these three realms, they have principalities and powers sitting. And you cannot enforce dominion mandate without being able to control all three realms. Because if you are controlling only one realm, the day you decide to travel by sea, the powers of the sea will drown you. If you are controlling only one realm, the day you travel by air, the powers of the air will say, who is that stepping into my territory? They are going to crash the plane. If you don't even know how to control the earth, the day you travel by land, you are going to be brought down. So, Jesus did something that was profound. Because the Bible tells me that wherever the soles of your feet shall tread upon, you shall take. Political powers are lost when people take to the streets and they march upon the capital and they march upon the cities, they take over the nation. And so Jesus didn't want us to go without enforcing the power of dominion. When Adam lost his dominion to Satan, the entire world was changed upside down and the kingdom agenda suffered. So Jesus came. When he walked upon the face of the earth for three and a half years, he subdued all the powers of the earth. He worked miracles and he defeated the powers of the earth. That means every believer, as long as you're a believer, no power on earth can ever defeat you again. Then Jesus did not stop there. He began to walk upon the sea. You know what he did? He took authority over the power of the sea, the serpentine spirit, the leviathan, and all those things, he subdued them. Then finally, before he went, he went into the spirit realm, the earth realm. He subdued the air. Why did he do that? Because in the concept of dominion, it is clear. You shall have dominion over the birds of the air, demonic powers, and 
natural powers over the fish of the sea, water spirits, and over everything that creeps upon the face of the earth. So Jesus finished it. Today, I proclaim from this moment, every element of the air that has held you captive, you are free. Every element of the sea that has kept you captive, you are free. Every element of the earth that has kept you captive, you are free. Begin to exercise the power of dominion in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak into the pharaohs of the sea, into the pharaohs of the air, into the pharaohs of the earth. Let my people go. In the mighty name of Jesus, let my people go. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are free. Free economically, free spiritually, free in your marriage, free in every spectrum of life. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Acts 1, 8 tells me, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Today, let the power of God come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. You are already full. Say it. Come on, say, I'm already full. Say, I am already rich. You are already full. You are already rich. You have reigned as kings without us. And indeed, I could wish you did reign that we also might reign with you. Jesus said, it is finished. But I don't feel full. That is your business. You must activate it by faith. There are no poor people in God's kingdom. But God, I don't have money. God, Walampera. God, Patina. God, Walantrabaho. God is saying, what do you want me to do? I've already given it to you. When you stand before me, I don't have poor kings, I have rich kings. But God, I don't have the anointing. He said, no, you are full of my spirit. Today, by the mystery of the word of God, let every gift in you be activated right now. Be full of joy. Be full of wealth. Be full of power. Be full of health. Be full of everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Now say, I am full. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am a king. I am a priest. I am righteous. I am holy. And I am heaven bound. Every king has a domain. Discover your purpose. Harness your gifts. Hone your talents. And know your area of influence. Wherever you see yourself standing in life is your kingdom. For the businessmen, you are the kings of business. Politicians, you are the king of politics. Students, you are the king of the colleges and, and high schools. Academicians, you are the king of the academic world. Wherever you see yourself, you're a king. John chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Why then did God bring prophets? Prophets declare God's will and purpose in order to confirm kings. They activate spiritual potentials and blessings to achieve this. Kings expand the kingdom frontiers while priests mediate for the people and empower them to succeed in their highest aspirations with God's principles. Every king needs a prophet. In the Old Testament, kings prospered as a result of their close association with prophets. The problem some of the modern day kings are having, they say we don't need a prophet. In the Old Testament, the anointing came upon only three people, kings, prophets, and priests. And in the New Testament, while they abolished all office, and they made the office of the priests and the kings, the prophetic anointing remained. Because God has raised prophets to confirm kings. When you deny the prophetic 
ministry. I cannot listen to them. And you see, one of the saddest things that happened to me, I saw people who were insignificant. I'm not saying this just to put people down. They came when they didn't have anything. And if I say A, they'll say yes. If I say B, but as they grew powerful, they kept away from me. And I've seen it over and over and over, how disaster came and took them. We cannot be proud. Do you know why God makes the relationship like that? Why sometimes he does not make the prophet too wealthy. He makes the king so rich so that the king in his wealth can bless the prophet. Because if he makes the prophet so powerful and so rich, the prophet is going to be so proud sometimes he may derail from the faith. And so he made the king so rich so that the king in his greatness, if he turns away from the prophet, he gets into trouble. That's why the Bible tells me in the book of Second Chronicles, Chapter 20, verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. When you run away from the prophetic anointing, you don't prosper politically. You don't prosper economically. You don't prosper in many areas. You don't run from the prophet. Why do they run from the prophet? Sometimes when people are so stubborn in their sin, they don't want to change, they run from the prophet. You know, don't allow God to humble you. Before God gave you that office, every day you knew how to call the prophet. Now you got into that office, the prophet calls you prophet, I'm so busy, I'm in the province. You are going to get yourself in trouble. It is not my duty to sound tough or harsh, but it is my duty to tell you the truth. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will take you to the highest places. I don't say this all the time. I'm sure this couple, they are going to be embarrassed, but I was telling someone. I said, I've met world leaders. I've met governors, I've met senators, I've met many of them, but the most obedient politician I have met, I told Sister Lara, I said, it is you and your family. And that is why, by God's grace, I prophesy on this pulpit that God will continue to lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus. You turn your back against God, he's going to turn his back against you. It is God that gives power to people. And if God has given you that power, use power to serve him. Use power to glorify his name. I was listening to Luigi's speech. It, he was not even making a political speech. He was preaching. Because of his conviction. Because we cannot call the name of God when we are in trouble and God gives us a position, then we turn our back against him. Anytime that happens... It's always going to end up in disgrace. Unfortunately, I need to say this. There was someone I knew. He was a congressman. And I told him, God told me you're going to be the next governor of this province. Every day he followed me. Then he became a governor. And there was danger. And I told him that your helicopter is going to crash. In one week's time, if you don't do anything, that's going to be the end. It was too busy. I even went to his house how many times to pray. In one week's time, the time I gave to him, his helicopter crashed and he died. I do not say this to put him down. He was my best friend. He was a good man. But do you really need to die that way when there is a prophetic warning? And that day became one of the saddest days of my life. Today, when you hear the sound of the Spirit of God, do not harden your heart. I believe that everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice 
will rise up to the needs of the hour in the name of Jesus. That my God will enlighten your spirit. That the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge will be upon you. That God will speak to you. That my God will not allow you to walk into danger. My God will not allow you to walk into destruction. Every trap that the devil has set for you. That God will tell you the way to go. God will tell you to go right and to go left. And that pride will not step into your life. Pride will not lead you to destruction. Greed will not lead you to destruction. Disobedience will not lead you to destruction. I prophesy and I declare that none of you will die before your time in the mighty name of Jesus. The greatest mistake the church made was to hand over the leadership of the earth to unbelievers who are spiritual slaves. Such people can never reign as kings. They plunder when they should plan destroy instead of developing and break when they should build. No wonder Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, said this in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 7. I have seen servants and horses while princes walk on the ground like servants. I declare from this moment that the era where servants are riding on high places and you are busy trekking, the season is over. Whatever the devil took from you today, I declare sevenfold restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 15, verse 26 to 27. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. It is high time for unbelievers to be eating the crumbs from us. Not we going to unbelievers and begging them. Healing is your right. Nobility is your right. Leadership is your right. Kingship is your right. Begin to manifest your right in the name of Jesus. From this moment, you will sit with kings. You will dine with kings. Your destination is not the bottom of the table, but the head of the table in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew 7, 6. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine. Lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. In conclusion, this is a warning to the body of Christ. If you're a king, learn how to manifest with kings. If you give that which is holy, which is kingly, to ordinary people, they will use it against you. Know how to invest your time. Don't cast your pearls before swine. You know, I know that the Bible tells me that he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. It is good. But sometimes, if that's the focus of your entire life, you will never see the spiritual significance. That is why I give to the poor, but every year I also save my money and I sow it into the life of the prophets so that it can speak into my life. Because when you give to the poor people, God is going to pay back to you. But the poor people cannot speak into your prophetic destiny. So sometimes you also need to invest in spiritual altars so that your destiny can be preserved. The mistakes some of us make all the time, you do only the social things, but you don't do spiritual things. And so when trouble comes, the social things will not help you. It is the spiritual things that will give you recovery. It is my prayer that you will live a balanced life today in Jesus' name. Who are the kings in the house? Where are the kings in the house? I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to confess so that the demons can know. I want you to confess so that the principalities and powers can know. Say, I am a king. I am a priest. I am born of God. Born of his spirit. Born for a purpose. I will not die. 
but live to declare the glory of God. No weapon of the enemy fashioned against me shall prosper. As for me and my house, we shall serve God. We shall live in holiness. We shall live in righteousness. We shall live in favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I lift your sons and daughters, kings and priests before you. I declare that from this moment, their existence, their reality, and everything that concerns them shall be kingly in the name of Jesus. Every dividend they need will be given to them in a kingly manner in the name of Jesus. Their words shall carry the authority of kings. I declare that their homes are saved, their families are saved. They are protected from every assault from hell in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that all these blessings shall be upon you. You shall be blessed in the city and you shall be blessed in the province. You shall be blessed in your home and you shall be blessed in your family. You shall see your children's children's children. If Jesus tarries in the name of Jesus, you shall see victory always and no defeat in the name of Jesus. You shall walk into favor you shall walk into power you shall walk into holiness you shall walk into righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus you shall be the transmitters of righteousness every good thing will be upon you goodness will follow you mercy will follow you favor will follow you arise and shine for God's spirit and God's glory is risen upon you if you're watching me online and you say, I want to be a king, I don't know who I am, say this after me. But you, the first step of being a king is to acknowledge the king of kings. Say, Lord Jesus, I know you're the son of God, you died to set me free today. By the mystery of the word of God, I acknowledge my sins with my heart. I believe and with my heart, confession is made unto righteousness, come into my life and become my personal Lord and Savior. If you've just prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the greatest kingdom on the face of this planet. If you need to contact us, contact us from the address on the screen below. God bless you. See you physically and online next Sunday. Hallelujah. Good day, everyone. My name is Jasmine Henry. My life has been transformed positively and continuously by Tony Mario Heist messages. You should definitely check it out and make sure to subscribe to his channel.